Hi everyone, this is Mike again. So what I want to do now is I want to show you how to stylize each of those sections using a external style sheet. Now I'm going to be using Notepad and I have my web page already up in the browser. This is the second part of the video that we're talking about. And the first thing I want, I want you to recognize is that automatically on the page uh, you'll notice that the link links are coming out blue and um, the fonts are a little bit a little bit smaller so like where it says welcome a little bit small so what we're going to do is we're going to use a style sheet just to do some simple formatting of my text and we're going to go in and make changes to it now in uh, you can use notepad to create a style sheet and the key thing here is I already have one open so I want to take a look at it is that this here I, I have uh, one two three and about uh, basically uh, seven different styles that I'm applying a style to using my external style sheet. So here at the top um, we have the body section and basically you always put the tag in first then the curly bracket and then the properties and you'll notice that here it says font color colon so instead of equal sign we use the colon and then we put the hexadecimal in and we're choosing the font color of our body text. So if you'll see our color down here in our body text, you might see some changes. Um, also, we're making control changes to our heading three style. So where it says welcome. We're also making changes to the color of our links. So it's a certain green color. You'll notice there's, there's four link colors uh, options that you can do. You can see a link color. If someone's visited the link, that'll be a different color. If someone's over top of the link, that'll be a different color. If they make it active by clicking on it, it'll be a different color. It just helps them to determine the color itself. Now, when you put this in, again, you put the tag in, and then you put a curly bracket in, and then properties. And then once it's all listed here, it's very simple. You save this as a cascading style sheet by doing a file save as. And in this case, I'm going to change the save as type to all files. Make sure you put the .css in at the end. Don't put a .html. It's not a HTML document. It's a cascading style sheet. So you need to put the extension CSS in. Once you do that, it's already been saved for me, so I don't have to go and resave it. Then you have to tell your page to link to these styles. How do I do that? I use what we call the link tag, and it must go into the head section of your web page. So if you're going to have every page linked to this external style sheet, then every page is going to have the same code. It's going to link to one style sheet. You're not going to have multiple style sheets for every page, just one. And that makes it easier. It makes it easier to maintain. It makes it quicker to go and make a change. So in this case, what we're going to be using is we're going to use the link tag. And you must put in the name of the style sheet. And that is the href equals, then in quotes, the name of the style sheet. Don't forget the .css. Again, notice how everything's lowercase. And then you must include the other basic information here that has uh, nothing to do with how you designed it. It's just the properties to let the browser know what, to, what it is. So this information must be always included. Now I'm going to save this. So let's refresh this and see what happens. Notice the color change on the links. If I bring my mouse over the link, notice it changes to a different color. Notice that welcome went to a different color and made it went a little larger. Notice the body text is a little bit different color. So automatically it applied that format to my document. And that's what we want. So cascade, you know, working with cascading style sheets is simply using you know, formatting sections, formatting tags. Now what I want to do is I want to control each section. So now I'm going to have to go back to my style sheet and add information about the div tags that I added in video number one. And in this case it would be the header, the left content, the main section, and the footer section. So I have to add it in here. Now the thing about with div tags is that you cannot just type in the name. So if you typed in left content by itself, it, HTML, the browser won't know it. 
So anytime you use a div tag and you want to recognize a name, you always have to start off with a pound sign. So you put the pound sign in, followed by the name. So like here, in this case, I'll type in left content. And then you can put in the curly bracket and then put the properties in. The important part here is to understand is you got to put the pound sign in so the browser knows that you're talking about the div tag. If you don't, it doesn't know what you're talking about. So it's going to look for a left content tag and it won't find it. So this is called the div tag. So that's how you're going to put it with a style. Now I already have it done, so let me open it up instead and copy it in. Makes my life easier so I don't have to make a mistake. I'm going to copy all each section in. I've already created stuff for that. I'm going to paste it right in. Now, the key here is, again, the information I have here, I'm going to highlight same content with a bracket, and then I added some extra styles applied to it. Okay, Maybe for your assignment, you don't have to put the styles. Maybe you have to control the width and height. The main part of working with positioning has to do with these three properties right here that I have highlighted. Width and height is the major one. What you're going to be going in and doing is you're going to control that, that width of that section. So in this case, I want it to be 100 pixels width with a height of 450. And that's going to block off that area of my page. And it will only be that section. Only be that section. So if I go down to the main section, I'll see that it also has a width of 750. I didn't change and add a height. Sometimes you don't have to. Footer section. You'll notice the width is 925, so it's going to cross the whole thing. So here, width height is important. Now what does float do? Float just takes the section and moves it either to the left or right of the side of a content. So if I change it to the right side, you'll move the navigation to the right side of the page. And we can experiment and see that. So let's save this. Okay, We already have our, brow our page indexed to the new page. So let's refresh this now. So notice how it went in. Let's, look, let's concentrate on the navigational side, which is our left content. First of all, it made all the text bold. That's because of this first control. It made this font size a little bit larger because of the 15 pixels. It made it Times New Roman. It's going to be on the left side. Its width is 100 pixels. The height is 450. Height, going all the way down. The padding is how much spacing inside the section. So it's like a margin within the section. And then we have a background color which it happens to be a gray. So it helps distinguish that from the other sides of the pages. So let's change the width so we can see it. Let's change the width to 200. I'm going to save it, refresh, notice it's taking up that much space. So I'm going to change it back to 100 save it and it goes back to what I want it to be. So you're controlling the different physical dimensions of each of the division sections that we have on our page. You can add other elements which basically help enhance the color, enhance the readability of that section. Now let's see what happens here if I move this to the right Save it, reload it. It pushes things, it pushes the navigation to the right, but it also moves the main section down. So it's not something I want in this case. So I'm going to bring it back over. And I can actually control it more too if I wanted to, if I had some extra time. So all I'm doing is I'm putting some information. Now another thing I forgot to mention is we're putting the tags in for Cascading Style Sheets. Any of the properties, you'll notice it's pretty much set up the same way. It's basically the name of the property followed by a colon and then the style attribute. 
Also at the end of the attribute would be a semicolon. This tells the browser that we are done <laughs> with that property. So you have to put the semicolon in at the end. Now I like to set up my uh, styles by going in and having each line for a different property. It makes it easier to go back and ha to edit so I can find that information a lot quicker. But that also depends on how you're, you feel comfortable with that. So again, all we're doing here is we're taking our div tags and we're adding it to our pages to create separate sections and then we're applying a couple different styles to it and in this case what I want you to concentrate on is the width and height. The width and height. Because it'll make your life a little bit easier because now that section is taking up this much space. The footer section down here at the bottom is going across 920 some pixels. You can control the height if you wanted to. You can control and you get more control compared to what we started with. So concentrate when you start with positioning. If you're new to it, start concentrating just on experimenting with width and height. Take your layout that you did. So it might be like a, this is a very basic layout. So now experiment, how do I get those four sections to come out? So don't worry about putting content into it yet just worry about getting the sections that come up a certain width and certain height. Then you can always fill the content in afterwards. So hopefully that gives you a little better idea on how to work with the div tag and how to stylize it with an external style sheet. Remember when you work with an external style sheet and you're going to upload it to your, your server, you've got to upload the web page as well as the style sheet. So make sure you do that and I'll talk to you later.